Canadian women have had a sure and steady hand in the building of the scientific community. Harriet Brooks, born 1876 in Exeter, Ontario, second child of a family of eight, was to collaborate in research with two landmark physicists, Ernest Rutherford and J.J. Thompson. In 1894, Brooks and her family moved to Montreal, where she studied languages and physics, relying on scholarships and awards for financial support. When Ernest Rutherford arrived from England, Brooks became one of the first members of his research team. In 1901, she demonstrated that the radioactive emanation from the element radium is radon gas. This was the first evidence that one element could change into another. Rutherford said of her, next to Madame Curie, she is the most prominent woman physicist in the field of radioactivity. Alice Evelyn Wilson wrote of her early years, while not heavily built, I am muscularly very strong and from earliest childhood have been accustomed to an out-of-door life, both with canoe and tramping. In geology, the world is your laboratory. For 50 years, Wilson explored the Ottawa Valley. Its landscape and its fossils slowly surrendered their geological secrets. She was the first woman to be given professional status in the Geological Survey of Canada. But she had to fight entrenched attitudes for 11 years as she sought an opportunity to pursue a PhD. Her supervisor, W.H. Collins, wrote in a memo, Physically and sexually, Miss Wilson is not fitted for any but the lightest sort of field work, and only in settled districts. An undesirable condition would be created by attempting to fit her for field duties. Wilson succeeded in wrestling an unpaid leave of absence from the survey when she was 45 years old to earn her Ph.D. At the age of 80, Dr. Alice Wilson was still scrambling up cliff faces searching the strata for fossils still fit for field work. Thanks to the groundwork of people like Harriet Brooks and Alice Wilson, women's role in science is growing and diversifying. The life of Sister Mary Lou Gavin is an ongoing testimony of this. For 49 years, a researcher, educator, administrator, cultivator of the sciences, and cultivator of goodwill, Sister Lua has taken her love for science from the laboratory into the field, the classroom, and the boardroom. For 32 years, Sister Lua taught at Mount St. Vincent University in Halifax. Often, she would lead classes to the woods on the mount or down to the shores of Bedford Basin to explore the flora and fauna. A respected marine biologist, her research took her to Florida, Massachusetts, Newfoundland, England, Monaco, and Italy. In 1950, Sister Lua founded the biology department at Mount St. Vincent University, becoming the only woman chair of a biology department in Canada. She remembers many meetings beginning, Gentlemen and Sister Lua. Sister Lua continues to devote her life to promoting understanding through science and through the Order of the Sisters of Charity. Canadian women scientists have continued to move forward Women in Canada are discovering that a basic education in science leads to surprising pathways. Karen Hollett works at the Nova Scotia Supreme Court Appeal Division in downtown Halifax. But her past, and probably her future, includes more than legal duties. I consider myself definitely just, you know, to still be a biologist. And when asked, um, I usually tell people I'm a lawyer, uh, but definitely a biologist. I present myself as both because I think that that varied background really provides more options. So far. As a field biologist, Karen studied the reproductive habits of grouse in Ontario, vocalizations of elk in Manitoba, and behavior of captive wolves in Nova Scotia. Shortly after I got to the compound, uh, we actually went into a den and took two of the pups out uh, to be hand raised and uh, studied. My duty was to um, uh, bottle feed them and hand raise them and then film them daily um, so we could see, you know, distinct differences. There have been periods where I haven't seen the wolves for quite a long period of time and I've gone out to the compound just to visit and, uh, you know, they still remember me. 
I reached a point after two years of realizing that to do my own research and to have control over the projects that I worked on, I would have to do a PhD, and that meant three plus years. I saw law as something that I could combine with my biology or science background to um, work in environmental areas. I would really recommend uh, a science career to any woman, basically because um, there's a growing trend in uh, various fields to look for people with a broad background, and science certainly provides that. Science and law are a really good combination in a number of ways. In science, uh, you, you want to come to a specific solution, but in law that rarely occurs and it's more gray, so it's more of a balancing, but, but the analytical approach is, is certainly in both. So it's been very helpful. Lori Flindle graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Biology. Her minors were Chemistry and Math. Instead of donning the white coat of the laboratory, Lori chose the uniform of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Lori's degree proved to be useful in other ways. I didn't really have a set path that I intended to follow. My reasons for going into sciences in the first place were uh, basically my fear of chemistry. I got out of high school with the idea that it was more than I could handle and possibly um, uh, beyond my grasp. So when I got into, I didn't like that feeling, so I got into the idea that I was going to take chemistry and biology in university for my own satisfaction to know that I could do it. Lori's initial plan was to have a more complete mix of science and law enforcement. Originally, my intention was to pursue the science, uh, do research, or possibly go into medicine. And towards the end of the degree, um, I changed my mind. I applied for the Royal Canadian Mount Police with the intention of getting into the forensic sciences or the lab. Uh, and after two years of service, I changed that again and decided that I wanted to stay with the people side of the force and continue the enforcement work. Having taken a science degree has helped me considerably in my field of endeavor. Science teaches you to think analytically, to think clearly, to deal with the facts and only with the facts. You have to interpret what you see as what you see and nothing else. Pat Lane has a PhD in ecology. She is the chair of the Senate of Dalhousie University and a successful writer of children's literature. You'll find her on every who's who list of women, scientists, and community leaders. She has enough awards, appointments, and citations for several lifetimes. Her environmental consulting firm, P. Lane & Associates, does work all over the world. Her original plans to study medicine slipped away, and a new inspiration arose. We were living in the mountains up in the Adirondacks above the snow line, which was just spectacularly beautiful. And uh, my husband was a fisheries biologist and a very much an avid hunter, fisherman, these types of things. So we did a great number of outdoor activities. And the more I did of that type of thing, I, I thought ecology would be a much better area to go into because I wanted to have um, a family and have it fairly soon so that uh, this is something the children could do with me and we could enjoy nature together. Pat Lane's life is not confined to her research, however. I had one child with each of my three degrees and then one with my assistant professorship. That was a busy time. I moved from biology into business just after I came back from Harvard where I spent two years working in the Harvard School of Public Health as a human ecologist and in that department we had a whole variety of people working on global population problems. By the time we worked on all of these problems together it, it became just difficult to go back into a strictly biology department. P. Lane and Associates, environmental consultants, opened for business in 1984 in Halifax. It allows Pat to travel, to meet and work with a diverse group of people, and to continue to conduct ecological research. I find that um, my science is extremely helpful to my business, one, because of the objectivity and analytical skills that you learn in science. But also, our work is based on science, so that it's an integral part of everything that we're doing in the business. What begins as a first-year biology class can grow and flourish into a career that outgrows university, town, province, and country, shaping the very future of the planet. 
I've worked in Sri Lanka, for example, with um, doing a large environmental rehabilitation design for a mountainous region after a hydroelectric facility had been put in. And that had a large women in development component looking at social gender analysis and how did women, if we were going to rehabilitate this environment, how could women be actively involved and also um, how could they be helped because many development projects actually hurt women more than help them. Margaret Fraser works as a nurse in a highly specialized field. However, nursing is now part-time work as she continues to attend university, exploring other directions. Switching from nursing school to business was really difficult because I worked nights a lot of the time, so I often had to do a lot of my homework late at night. Uh, I decided to do a master's in my last uh, years of nursing school, and uh, you're not currently allowed to do a master's right away after nursing school. You need years of experience. So I decided to go into business, which I could do right away after graduation, on a part-time basis and work full-time as a nurse, and then possibly transfer my credit credits over to a nursing degree. However, I ended up liking business, so I stayed in it. I'd like to work for a large um, multinational company. Uh, my concentration in business is international business, so I, and I'd like to use my biology and my nursing to work in a medical or pharmaceutical related industry. To be successful in business, you have to really understand the product that you're trying to promote. And I think that uh, my background in, in science and in nursing uh, gives me an advantage in, in uh, understanding the product. Career pathways can take unforeseen turns. The experience of university science can lead to work in the hospital down the street or meetings in boardrooms across the ocean. Margaret Fraser is already representing Canada far afield. I've been selected by the school to represent Nova Scotia companies overseas. I will be traveling to England and Belgium Amsterdam and Germany, and we'll be looking for business opportunities for Nova Scotia companies. It begins with a degree in science. I think that it's really important that when you go into a BSc that you have an understanding of what you want to get out of it and tailor it to meet your needs. I think that's probably the most important thing. And I think also it's really important to get a more open-minded view of the world. The world seems to turn faster every day. A science degree is a starting point, a cornerstone. It teaches problem solving and flexibility. It puts you in touch with active, interesting, and committed people. Science lets you create the future you want, or maybe a future you never expected. <laughs>